Good morning, friends. Scott Watts here. Thanks for tuning in for another video here at Watts Way Farms. It's a beautiful morning here on the farm, and we've got a lot of stuff to do, and I think a, kind of an exciting morning for us here. Uh, today's video is going to be kind of a tell and show and demonstrate uh, video. We made my wife and I, after months of discussion and debate and contemplation, we made what I consider is a pretty significant purchase for us here at the farm. We uh, broke down and purchased a full-on cattle squeeze chute, and I'm going to show it to you here in just a second. And we probably started talking about the need of a squeeze chute or not a need of a squeeze chute probably since before we got the uh, before we got our first cows last July and you know and I still don't not 100% sure we made the right decision but I think that we did you know new to cattle not a lot of experience uh, with cattle I wanted to do everything we could to ensure that not only are we doing a good job treating these animals well creating a you know a thriving life for them as treating them as humanely as possible but I also want to make sure that when my wife and I uh, are working these cattle um, that we're as safe and the cattle are as safe as possible and we watched for several months you know the various YouTube videos the folks that don't do any sort of squeeze shoot and to those I mean Pete at just a few acres uh, with his head gate type setup was what I was leaning to for quite a while but at the end of the day I just decided that I wanted to be able to fully restrain um, my cattle and the one difference in what I plan on doing versus what Pete does is he when he has a bull calf born on his farm he captures it and castrates it within 24 hours I'm going to kind of go a different route there and you know and I'm not saying one's right or the other I mean heck I've I haven't been doing this a year yet so I have definitely no position to say what's better or not but Greg Judy in his several of his videos he mentioned that he doesn't castrate until his bull calves are 12 months old and that using the testosterone really helps you know put on that growth and in that first year of life and that's kind of makes a lot of sense to me and so I'm gonna go that route and so I need a way to restrain a you know a 12 month old bull calf is a you know a sizable animal even with Dexters and so I needed something that would handle uh, be able to, so I could safely handle that and another factor going into the decision of which we of a squeeze chute was which squeeze chute so we looked at you know, I looked on Facebook for a good used one for months and the reality is air in South Alabama there's just you know within a several hour drive there's just wasn't a whole lot to choose from I mean I saw an occasional one here or there I saw a a cattle scale that had it kind of been converted into a squeeze chute I saw some that were just I mean looked like they were older than my grandparents and had not been very well maintained and so at the end of the day, we decided to buy a squeeze chute. And I did buy the Prefert uh, squeeze chute. I looked at the Tartar. I looked at uh, the Arrow. I looked, there's a local guy a few hours from here that makes his own. I looked at those and went, you know, internally struggled uh, on exactly which one to buy for, you know, for many months, like I said. And at the end of the day, we went with the Prefert because it's just got a, I mean, man, it's such a good reputation. And when we bought back in, I guess it was late October, early November, I bought those two steer to grow out. And then that cow-calf pair that I've, you know, the, the cow is going to become a cull cow. And then the, the bull calf is going to be castrated and steered out as well. The guy that we bought them from, we wanted to vaccinate them as soon as, as we were loading them onto the trailer. So we back, he had the preferred. And man, what a pleasant experience that was working cows of uh, through that preferred. And so then we decided, you know, preferred definitely wasn't the cheapest, but I do think it also wasn't the most expensive, but I do think all in all, it was a good quality purchase. And then the next decision was which model of preferred we should buy. You had the SO1, which is their kind of their 
low-end model, um, significantly cheaper than their SO4, which was probably their, their mid-grade one before you start getting into hydraulics and all that. And for the longest time, I was leaning towards the SO1. But then I started thinking back to some of my purchases over the last few years as we built up and got to this farm. So I had purchased a, you know, a, a, a Chevrolet 2500 truck to pull, you know, the trailer with my side-by-side -side and the tractor when it goes to shop and our fifth wheel RV that we've got. And it didn't take long. It was actually the fifth wheel RV that made me realize I probably should have shaved a little bit more and got a bigger truck. You know, I bought my tractor. I mentioned it in a previous video when I was trying to unload pig feed. You know, the tractor I felt was my first tractor I've ever owned. It was a John Deere 4105. And, and it seemed like a really big tractor from having never had a tractor to going to standing and walking around this uh, December a year ago. That seemed like a, a really big tractor to me. But now, a year and a couple months later, I realized I probably should have saved a little bit more and gotten a big, tr bigger tractor. Um, you know, heck, even my chainsaw this morning, I was out cutting some uh, trees in the back in the back part of our land, getting ready to do a new pig paddock to move the pigs, and I had the same thought there. I mean, that's just a Husqvarna, I think it's like the 435 or 405, I forget, 4, 4 something model, and even that one. I mean, a good chainsaw, but for cutting trees, I wish I had gone a little bit bigger. So it seemed to be a recurring theme there. My desire for, you know, again, I buy John Deere, I buy Husqvarna, I bought Preferred, I brought Chevrolet. I mean, I, I don't mind spending a little bit extra on the, on a, on a good name and product, but it seems like I may be overbalancing my frugalness to try to save a few bucks and then wishing I had not done so. So we went ahead that and though it was a big jump up about a thousand bucks more I went ahead and went with the SO4 model knowing that um, most likely if I got the smaller model down the road I was gonna wish I had a uh, the bigger one and really the big difference I, what I found from my extensive research between the SO1 and the SO4 was the size the SO4 is a little bit bigger and though I do run Dexter cattle uh, which are smaller, I may not run those forever. I may eventually decide to get into a bigger commercial breed. You know, my hope is that eventually this 80 acres turns into more than 80 acres. And then, you know, and it may take seven years, it may take 10 years, but I really do hope that I can, you know, leave the daytime job and do this type of, you know, uh, farming full time. So, so I went with the bigger one. And then the other reason with the bigger one and I think is kind of related to why you just don't see a lot of these for sale. Uh, I really do think that a squeeze chute, if you take care of it, and, and I tend to do that, is a truly is a generational purchase. I mean, when we purchased this 80, this 80 acres, we bought it with every intention of passing it off to our kids. And, and what, eventually here, probably pretty soon, I'm gonna do a video and introduce you to our kids. We have a total of five kids. They range from four years old to 24 years old. So we've got a, a broad, a very, you know, broad spectrum age of children there. And our hope is that, you know, the, especially with the younger ones growing up here on the farm with us, they're going to grow to love this as much as we already do. And, and then want to continue and that this land will stay in the family forever or for you know at least many generations and I honestly think with a squeeze chute as much as land is a generational purchase I honestly think it's a, a squeeze chute as well so I figured so I'm not only buying it for my my use I'm buying it for hopefully my kids use many years down the road when they when they take this over so I'm going to go ahead and give you a kind of an overview a quick overview of the chute but that's not the purpose of today's video today's video I bought the, they call it a wheel kit. Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of a trailer attachment so that you can hook the squeeze chute up and move it around. And the thought is until I know exactly where I want to set it up, um, I'm gonna need that. Plus, I don't wanna leave it outside, expose the elements. Like I said, I'd I wanna take care of it. So even if it's a little bit of work to hook it up and wheel it into the barn, but I hope to have it in a few, here having a few months. Um, to me, it's worth it. And the other part, there is a, right now, my, my thought is that I'm never gonna have like a permanent corral working pen type system. I'm gonna do a, um, 
more of a temporary setup. So when I need to work the cattle for whatever reason, I can, you know, wheel out the panels, wheel out the the squeeze chute, do the work, and then put it back up. So we'll see that. And then the final thing I want to mention is about where I purchased this from. You know, I don't, I'm, I'm obviously you can tell by my number of views. I'm a very new YouTuber. I get no sort of sponsorship, monetization, anything. <clears throat> but I think it is worth mentioning. Now, I bought this from National Roper Supply out of Texas, and the sales guy's name is Ryan. I'm going to put a link to their site uh, in the description. And if you're looking for something like this, I can't recommend Ryan enough. I mean, never met the guy. We talked on the phone. We exchanged text. I mean, he was super responsive. I tend to ask a bunch of questions and probably also borderline a little bit impatient once I order something as far as getting it. And he bent over backwards to accommodate that. Now, the the <clears throat> I guess the reason I mentioned this, the National Roper Supply is and buy from Texas is the natural question is, Scott, why didn't you buy one local? I'm a huge proponent of buying local, even if it means paying a little bit more. I mean, heck, I'm a, trying to make my mark in this, you know, current world as a direct-to-consumer uh, farmer. And so buying local is, you know, what is what I'm asking folks to do. So in this case, why did I not do it myself? And the reason is, price um i mean even though i know like with my farm product i'm gonna sell it at a little bit of a premium and but i do believe it's a superior product i talked to my local co-op my local farm supply store the co-op an hour away and in a farm supply store three hours away and for this exact same model of of squeeze chute it was eight hundred to two thousand dollars more expensive, and that's shipping and everything. So that's apples to apples. So sales tax, everything that was withstanding, all bottom line to bottom line. It was cheaper for me to buy something from National Roper Supply in Texas, have it shipped via ground freight uh, here in uh, Alabama, than to go to, you know, three hours away or an hour away or my local. I mean, by the tune of like a thousand bucks. I mean, and I'm all for buying local, even if I got to pay a little bit more, but I mean, a thousand dollars. I mean, I just, you know, I, I just can't, um, I can't understand that difference. And even one of the, one of the uh, feed stores or the farm stores about three hours away that I talked to, they literally, we, we even talked about, I told him, you know, this is what I can get it elsewhere. I'd really like to buy local. And I mean, and he said his cost for that squeeze chute from the manufacturer was cheaper than what National Roper is selling. So maybe it's a, you know, National Roper Supplies is such a huge company. Maybe they get volume discounts. I don't know. I don't get it. But maybe one day somebody from Preferred will see this video and maybe they can give me a comment as to why that is. So, all right, I've talked enough. Let me show you what I've got and uh, let's get to work. Okay, so here's the squeeze chute literally exactly as I received it. The only thing I've done so far is take the, it was wrapped in shrink wrap. I took the shrink wrap off. Obviously I set it on the ground, took it off my trailer and then I took the wheel kit. They had put the wheel kit in the center and um, and to make it ship. So I pulled that out. And then here's the actual wheel kit. And the only thing I've done so far to the wheel kit is I put the wheels on. So it's got this kind of horseshoe shaped um, piece here. You've got the piece that attaches to the um, trailer. I mean, to the front up here. And then this is the part that actually hooks to the squeeze chute. And that's kind of what I thought I'd do for the rest of this video is I'm going to assemble this. There's, you know, Prefert did a pretty good video on how to do this, but, you know, I've always found that the guys that make it and probably do this a thousand times, uh, when they do their video, it makes it, they make it look a whole lot easier than it tends to be when Joe Smo like me with only basic 
type mechanical skills gets in and starts doing it. So I'm gonna do that and we're gonna document it and we're gonna see if it's as easy as they make it out to be or if I'm gonna uh, really struggle uh, to do it. Now, now on their video, they say the only tools you need are two wrenches that do three quarter inch, either a socket or a wrench, and then two that do 15 sixteenths. Now watch the whole video and you need a little bit more. I'm gonna, you're gonna need the blocks because you're gonna have to lift up um, the, the squeeze chute to get the actual, that one receiver piece underneath it, as I'll show you in a second. And uh, you're also gonna need something to lift, which they do mention that. So I've got my tractor out to lift up one side to do that. And then I'm adding a little bit extra because I know I noticed that a lot of the parts still have their wire ties on it, which you know, I guess I'm gonna need pliers for that. And I'm gonna need the to cut the straps on the on the pallet uh, that it's sitting on. So I got my scissors. And then the other part is my socket set here, this fancy high dollar Pittsburgh that I got for probably next to nothing at Harbor Freight, um, doesn't go to 15 sixteenths. It goes to 13 sixteenths. So I'm hoping that between my wrenches and my vice grips and my channel locks that I can make it work. Now, I do have the three quarter inch socket. So with that, I'm ready to go. Now the first thing the instructions say to do is you got to attach these plates to the front edge of that squeeze chute using these bolts <clears throat> and that's what the pliers are for because as you can see these are wired on there pretty tight and actually trying to twist those off i'm just going to get my bolt cutter that's a pretty heavy gauge wire and i'll just cut it Okay, so as I expected, it was easier just to cut that wire than it was to try to untwist it. It was kind of a heavy gauge. So here's the, I guess the forward, uh, they call it squeeze chute carriage forward attachment plate. It's got these four holes in the side, and then this is what you, you, as you can raise and lower the, I guess the front of the wheel kit hitch to make it better aligned with your trailer hitch. Now the one part, and they emphasize this in instructions, is that this bottom U-bolt has to go below and, and up against this bottom cross piece. So they say use the three quarter, looks pretty straightforward. The holes go on the outside, obviously. So let's see how this goes together. That's obviously not right, let's try it the correct way, which would be like that. So in their instructions, they say you lift up on this so that that is flush with the bottom before tightening. All right, so there's the first one. Now we just rinse and repeat on the second one. All right, so now both of these are on, firmly attached, and for the next step, we have to raise up the front of the squeeze chute to get the receiver hitch under, and it's gonna attach these little welded on blocks right here. Now they actually specifically call out in instructions to lift from the front so it seems to me it'd be a little easier to lift from the rear but i'm guessing i want you to lift from the front because you've got something i guess right here a little bit better to lift from versus here in the back you start lifting from this and i don't know maybe it'll 
bend or something. So I guess if you could just barely touch it, get from there. But I'm gonna follow the instructions and lift it from the front. They say lift it and then block it four to six inches. So I'm gonna take the two, the two blocks, stack them on top of each other and put it right there. So this under section where it's blocked up, that's just a little thin piece of metal. I don't know. I just figured it. I think it's pretty safe. I mean, but I'm going to, oh, I'm going to leave my tractor right there for the time being. It's just a, another, um, just another safety, I guess, to help hold that thing up. I mean, I'm not going to get underneath it, so there's not much danger of falling and smashing me or nothing. But, uh, but it's got to come down anyway, so might as well leave it there. Okay, for this next part, we turn our attention to the receiver bar. We have to take this thing apart, and that's the 15 sixteenths that I don't have, so we'll do it with a wrench, and I won't lie, pre loosened this prior to starting this clip, because that thing was super tight. I actually had to kind of get a little forceful with it with the hammer. So anyway, so we take this off, and then this is supposed to slide off and into a few pieces. Oops, I don't want to lose that. A little harder, we're trying to do everything one-handed. All right, so then you got this piece, and as I expected, this piece. Now, what say is, now that end's welded, and what they say is you insert this underneath, I'll show you in the next clip, uh, from the operator side. Okay, now for this part, it says you gotta be on the operator side, which is easy to tell from the handles. And then this thing, just slides under and then hooks on this little welded notch right here. And they said the important thing to remember is to have this plate going to the front. So, pretty easy. Okay, so now we're back on the other side and the next step's pretty easy. You take this little plate that was inside here when we took it apart, it sits on top of this little stud here that you kind of sandwich it up into the little slot in the receiver hitch. <clears throat> and then this slides across, slides up here. Again, making sure this plate is forward. That goes all the way in. <clears throat> Another tool I didn't say at the beginning, but you need is a hammer to kind of help get that. See it all the way on there. And there it goes. Then 15, 16 bolts, screw it in, 
hopefully get hand tight and then the rest of the way with my wrench. All right, that part's done. Okay, for this next step, we're gonna lower it to the ground and then move on to putting the hitch part on the on the trailer wheel kit and that should be pretty much it. calling it a carriage I kind of like the word trailer but we're gonna take these two bolts off these are three-quarter and just reattach it here Okay, so this is pretty much assembled as per the instructions. The only final step is to kind of remove these pins from their holes and whatnot so that we can attach it. Now, one thing, it came with this two by four bolted in. The instructions don't really say anything about it, but I mean, I guess they don't need to. It's kind of obvious it's not gonna work with that on there. I'm assuming that was just some sort of support feature so i'm gonna take that off and then let's see if we can get this thing on that chute okay so the whole thing's put together and it's supposed to work pretty easy i just pick it up slide it in insert a few pins and it should be done so uh, this is the first time i'm doing it i didn't pre-stage it before i started filming uh so we'll see if it's as easy as they make out to be in their instructional video First thing you do is just pick this up, wheel it back, and then you're supposed to try to align those with that little hole down there. next part you push down on this until that lines up and with the hole that you want and it says the higher the hole the higher the trailer hitch uh, height so I'll be pulling this with a tractor and I can adjust up and down I don't see how it matters as much to me but let's see how it works
that's it i guess it's ready for the trailer hitch now put it on there oh yeah you gotta must move that by hand there you have it that's the prefert squeeze chute and uh wheel kit carriage as they call it and ready to roll into my barn or into my pasture somewhere to vaccinate some work some cows i may we do have uh six head right now that are needed their second dose of black leg i mean down here the feedback i got from my you know few fellow farmers i know and the vet that we talked to was you know natural grass fed there's nothing wrong with that but that you absolutely want to vaccinate for black leg um that that's a kind of a deal breaker if you get it your cow is going to die if we were more isolated um you know in a closed herd maybe we could get away with it but i've got a pretty good uh just on the other side of this wood line there's a fellow farmer that runs a bunch of cattle over there you know there's cattle up the street and there's cattle back that way and i don't know this it's a spore based um i guess disease if you will that they catch and i don't know how far that stuff can carry but we're going to follow it the dosage i've been told is they need their initial dose between two and six months of age another one uh i think it was a month or so after that i forget my wife's the one that kind of keeps those records and then one at 12 months and that'll give them lifetime immunity so that was kind of our push for getting us now so we could go ahead and get the do this ourselves without having to borrow a squeeze chute from a friend i've got a really good friend a young man here in town who is you know really making his way as a up-and-coming farmer and uh he's kind of even though i'm more than double his age he's kind of been somewhat of a mentor to me in helping me figure out how to do all this little um cattle enterprise so again great guy i'm sure he let me borrow it but I'm happy to finally have my own and can do it myself. So maybe if we get that to this afternoon or tomorrow, I'll take some videos of that and share it with you. But either way, I appreciate y'all turning tuning into this. I don't know if this was a boring video or somewhat informative, but I've always thought it was it would be interesting to see if the instructional video by the manufacturer is as easy as they make it out to be. And in this case, you know, I would say for the most part, yes. I mean, I needed a couple tools that they didn't mention, but um, all in all, I mean, I I don't have a lot of mechanical, I guess, inherent skills, and I was able to figure this out. So, you know, I mean, this is definitely a one or a two. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, I appreciate, you know, anybody that takes time to watch it this far and any comments or feedback you want to leave is also greatly appreciated i hope to see you again on a, another video here at the farm thanks y'all have a good day